All righty, I think we're live. All right. Can anybody see the chat? Yeah, I can see the chat. Yes. Is there anybody here yet? Hi, guys. Hold on, I'm going to see. What's up, I everybody? See. I just got a notification. <clears throat> it doesn't show me how many people are in here, but that's all good. Oh, yeah, it does. 12. Right, we live. All right. Okay, so um, I'm Tori. Uh, we have Shannon here and Chloe. And um, Chloe is, we're kind of going to be interviewing her. AZ has really bad reception right now, so he may or may not be able to jump in. Um, but Chloe is a survivor of Bob Brewer, who is one of her family members. Um, she'll explain all of that, but um, we did do an interview with her aunt and her cousin a few weeks, or a few months back, rather, um, about, you know, their testimony and and their story. So um, this is going to be Chloe's story. So if you guys can give like, a warm welcome to Chloe and show her some love. Um, she's super brave for coming out here and speaking today. Um, but her story is, I mean, all of their stories are completely different. But um, yeah, if you guys can welcome her. Chloe, go ahead and say hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Chloe. Um I'm actually Bob Brewer's granddaughter. Um, he was my dad's mom's husband. So. Okay. Sorry, I can't see the chat, so I'm just going to not try right now. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so who was he again? Your dad's mom's husband? He was dad's mom's husband, yes. Okay. Um, and him, go ahead. We called him Paul, Paul to everyone, all the grandkids. Okay. Um, can you share, um, like, what is your purpose for sharing your story with everybody? Um, my purpose for sharing my story is to let other women know that it's okay to speak up no matter, you know, how many years it's happened, how many generations it's been, you can be the one that saves everything. That's what I did. Well, in 2017, when I went to trial and Bob was, well, he was sentenced to seven years, which wasn't enough to us, but it was enough. At what age do you recall the abuse first starting, Chloe? Um, call it being on the age of like three or maybe two. I was in diapers. Um, I couldn't tell you the exact age of when it started, but the first time I remember was at the age of like two or three, maybe four. And it didn't end until 2014. Um, I was born in 2001. So probably 10 or 11 years. So it ended like seven years ago or so? Yeah. Yep, it ended in 2014. And at what age do you recall it being wrong? Um, I recall wrong to like six or seven, um, I would guess because I remember being outside, like playing on my back and I heard all this commotion in the house. Like everybody was arguing and my aunt had came in to visit us. And when she came to visit us, I had heard her say, you know, how could you let him do this to your daughter and still allow him here? 
And I didn't know what that meant, but if something was going on to me, did it happen to somebody else? And that's all I thought about. And that's when I called it being wrong was when I knew that I wasn't the only one So, um, did the, did the abuse, so, okay, um, I guess without sh sugarcoating it, um, what happened? Um, well, when I was younger, like in diapers, um, the first incident that I can tell you that I remember, like, I could tell you exactly what happened. Um, I was in diapers. My grandma had went to bed. And when she went to bed, she had, like, tucked me in. I slept in, like, the living room, like, in a little uh, crib. And I was in the little crib thing. And it, it was, like, one of those ones with the back side of the crib, you know. And then the front was open. And I remember laying there and Bob had like come up to me and was like patting me. And then he went from patting me to like putting his hands in my diaper. And that's when he started molesting me. He, he never raped me. He always molested me, but it, it was traumatizing. Um, can imagine. And he, I mean, every time I would go to school, you know, on the way to school or when my grandma would tuck us into bed and she'd go to bed, Bob would wake up in the middle of the night or try and sneak in our room. Before I went to school, he was always touching me before school every single day because my school was an hour away and he worked right by my school. So it was just me and him. So was your transportation to school? Yeah. Yeah, I actually... So you were guaranteed alone with him for an hour a day? I lived with him um, from the age of two. Uh, my parents were both uh, drug addicts, and my dad decided at the time that it was best that I went and stayed and lived with my grandmother and Bob because he didn't want me around everything he was doing. Um, my dad was a dope cook, so that's not a safe environment for a two-year-old. Right. So it was all the time. Anytime and if I remember correctly, isn't Bob, or wasn't he um, about seven feet tall? Yeah. He was like, I believe it was like six, nine, six, eight, maybe. I'm not for sure. I remember um, hearing a video of him saying that he could drop a, a quarter through his pinky ring. Yeah, he liked to brag about like it. an like, actual coin. When we would go and sing, yeah, he was a big would brag about it all the time. Um, we sung at churches and things and he would always try to put on a little comedian show and he'd always take off his finger and drop a quarter through it and show everybody how big his hands were. <clears throat> um, were you afraid of what he would do to you or what he would do to your family if you told anybody what was going on? Most definitely. Um, Bob had a way of, I wouldn't say bribing, but a way of trying to paint for you, to show you a love that I really didn't have, you know, from a father, but at the same time, he took advantage of it. Um, he would always tell me that if I wasn't good or like if you don't do what I tell you to do you know and you're not good this or you have to get a whoop in you know that you won't ever see your dad again 
and I never really thought about it, but that was, I was a daddy's girl and that was enough. That was enough. My so dad ordered already as it was. In order. And, go ahead. I apologize. Nope. So in order for you to like want to go see your dad or in order for you to protect your dad, either you were going to get in trouble or you couldn't see your dad or did he ever threaten to get your dad in trouble if you didn't do what he wanted you to do? He would just tell me I would never see my dad again um, because my dad would get in trouble. My dad is a very straight person and he doesn't care about his freedom. Um, and that's just as simple as that. He doesn't care about his freedom. Okay. So, so he would kind yeah, of like so hold I mean, that over your head. Yeah. Because I knew that if I told Yeah, because any, any little girl is going to protect their dad. And I knew my dad. I wasn't so much scared. I was <laughs> scared for like, I didn't want anybody to get hurt. And I know if I told my dad or anybody told my dad that, that someone would get hurt. Right. And I was scared of that. Um, did the abuse get worse as time went on or did it slow down when you got to a certain age? The abuse was always um, staying the same. I would say it happened more when I was younger, like in diapers, because that's when I remember more um, because of everything. My memory is here and there. But when I was younger is where um, triggers come in. Um, I have PTSD because of it. And any certain smell or something causes a flashback like that. Um, I don't like the smell of smoked food because Bob would sing at churches and he would smoke food for everyone. And I just, I can't stand the smell. Were there any adults outside of your family that were suspicious of abuse happening? I would say yes. Um, my mother for all this time would always tell my grandma, you know, keep an eye on her. When I'd go over, she'd say, you know, watch yourself around Paul. And I never really understood, but like, come on, you know, when you're, when it's happening, you're not stupid. Kids aren't stupid. Right. Um, my mom would always, like, when Bob and my grandmother finally broke up, Bob tried staying in contact with me, um, and my mom cut it off. No, you're not going to see Bob. They're, you know, Bob and your grandma aren't together. There's no reason for you. And that was that. How old were you when um, Bob and your grandma um, split up? 2014. I was 13. Okay. Did you ever see Bob after that um, at all? I've seen him time. Um, I, he had asked me, oh, could he pick me up? And me, my dad, again, he was in and out of prison, so he wasn't there a lot. And I always wanted a relationship with a dad in general, any dad. Um, right. And I had asked my mom, you know, can I go hang out with Paul for the day? And she told me, yeah. And I went and hung out with Paul and he wanted to take me to the lake and introduce me to his new wife. Um, he had met her at church and left my grandmother for her. That's what we did. And the abuse didn't happen that day. Um, I don't know why I always wondered that. But, like, I don't know. Was there ever a time that you wanted to um, run away? Um, I would say 
and I always as a kid never felt like I belonged um when I was a kid I was constantly you know thinking to myself I was always like I wouldn't say like scared but I was scared of like the dark you know little things like that that a kid would be scared of if they ran away you know in the middle of nowhere there's no running um and I always thought about like if I told somebody at school you know that would be like my runaway but at the same time I was scared um I just always knew I didn't want to be there like my grandma had to check me in a mental institution growing up and my mother because I was always causing trouble just so I could get away. I bet. It reminds me of, um, you know, the movie Forrest Gump, Jenny. Yeah. The, yep. She wishes that she was a bird so she could fly far, far away. And she's got a crazy dad. Yeah, that's what that reminds me of. Sorry. <laughs> Um, you yeah, know, when so you, sorry, go ahead. when you're in it, you're just so scared to like run. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but like, there were multiple times that I had packed a bag and like started walking down the driveway, you know, and like get to the end of the driveway, like look back home and like it's getting dark outside, like I'm scared. And I never knew, you know, what was gonna get me, what would grow say when they found out I was gone you know I love my grandma and That's she cool. was just as much a victim as anyone else Bob was verbally and really abusive to her and I didn't want to leave her behind it's crazy how smart a kid can be for you to naturally know to pack your bags and leave but you're too scared of what's out there and what could happen to you, like, even as a kid. Like, that's crazy to me. Yeah, um, even what happened so Even how you said it, how you got to the end of the driveway and looked back and got scared of the dark. Like, that's yeah. intense. Yeah. Um, how did it affect your social life? Like, what did it do? How did it affect your relationships with, like his abuse with you and everything you went through, like how did that affect your relationships? Like as it was happening, um, you know, and after it's happened, like what did that do? Um, my social life is very boring, you could say. Um, I am not a very social person anymore. Um, it's slowly like, I feel like it lo slowly gets worse. Um, like just being around people, like if there's too many people, I start getting nervous, like start having panic attacks. Um, I try and make relationships like with a boyfriend or something and it takes a toll on my relationships for the simple fact that I try and leave that stuff behind me but sometimes you can't help it. Like, there's literally been times, like, I've had a boyfriend hug me one time, and I passed out because I thought Bob was hugging me. Like, I I was in the oh kitchen. I don't know what I was cooking. But, I like, he went to hug me from behind, and I passed out because when I turned around, I saw Bob. So I try not to really socialize a lot. It's embarrassing when things like that happen and people are there. As a kid, were you like afraid to like tell your, you know, tell your friends or like, did you find yourself being secretive and like afraid to talk about anything because you were confused on like what you could and couldn't say? Yeah, um, I had mentioned to one of my friends when I was younger, you know, like, something like that had happened, but she didn't, like, know any better. We were really, really young, um, and, like, I had told her, but I was like, you can't tell anyone, you know, like, I'll get in some 
trouble. Like, you can't tell. You've got to keep your mouth shut. And to this day, me and her are still friends. Um, I, as a kid, didn't have many friends because I was bullied a lot. Um, and it also affected my social life in a way that nobody would understand. When I was younger, me and my sister were interviewed because there was an incident in the house where we were caught touching each other. And they interviewed us. And from that interview, you know, the investigator had told my mom, like, she'll come to you when she's ready. Something happened to her because she won't talk to us at all about what happened. And that was, um, my mom told me when I was older and that was crazy to find out. Did anyone in school, like teachers or anything, suspect anything suspicious? No, Bob was a role, like he was a good guy. He was a preacher, he was a singer, you know. He took me, uh, my whole life growing up, I wanted to be a singer and I wanted to be the best singer, like on TV. Um, and I feel like he really took that from me because like when we would go to churches and things, like we would sing and he would tell everybody what a good guy he was and he would preach. They'd see me up there on stage with him, you know, and not think twice about it because she's a granddaughter of a preacher who's singing. Right. So he was just a different person behind closed doors and he put on the good guy front in public. Most definitely. Did you ever have any boyfriends at any point, like during the abuse? And did they suspect anything? Not during. I yeah, was, you were kind of young when it ended. Yeah. Um, and I, like, you know, growing up, everybody, you know, they want a boyfriend or they want a girlfriend, even that young. Kids talk about that. But, like, growing up, I was never interested in boyfriends because I thought all guys were the same. I had my first boyfriend when I was 16. Um, back to, um, oh my goodness, I just lost it. I apologize. Sorry. I have something. Go ahead. <laughs> um, oh, back to him, you wanting to be a singer. Um, so if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't he used to really encourage you guys, like, you can, you know, be this superstar and you can do this if you act like a lady and, you know, dress like a lady and, like, you can do it and, like, I can help you. Well, like, wasn't he everybody's cheerleader and, you know, no. very TED Talkish and, you know, try to be an inspirational type of guy? He Definitely that way in front of people. Um, with me, he would always, you know, like I told you, he would like tell me, you know, he would kind of like bribe you. Like if you do what I tell you, you know, you can have something at the end of the week. Or if you do what I tell tell you, or if you don't listen, I'll tell your dad, you know, like you'll, your dad will be in trouble. Just mm -hmm. different things that I say, though would turn everything around that he said in public. Like he would constantly push me to sing in front of people. He loved me singing, bragged about me. Um, I was the best granddaughter, this, that, and another. But when it was behind closed doors and we were practicing, he would always tell me, you know, ladies don't sing those, you know, keep posture, just different things to like tear me down. Not very manipulative behavior. Um, so I know that you mentioned before um, that, so this, you know, he, that you know of, how many people in your family did um, he abuse or molest? Um, 
I believe there were like six or seven people at trial. Um, my family doesn't talk okay. about it a whole lot. Like, I don't know everybody that it happened to, if that makes sense. Yeah, like I, from what I understand, there's a couple people that definitely were not comfortable coming forward. And there were, and I still, to this day, you know, I would love to hold that. It's okay. I, I've been there. I, I've been there. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. No, um, what, so it kind of brings us not back to the beginning, but like what, like, I understand that, like, you, like, want to share your story, but like, what, um, what pushed you to do so? Because, I mean, I know it wasn't easy, and if it happened to people, it was happening in the family for generations before you, why was it in 2014, like, like, what, what made, like, what made you come forward, and like, what made you take action when there's all of these people who are, you know, older and, you know, I guess technically maybe even um, stronger willed, um, what, what made you as a 13 year old um, follow through and get things popping and get him in prison? Um, I, because of what happened to me, I struggled really bad with drug addiction. I was a meth addict from the age of 12. To, I, I'm still a drug addict, but I've been clean and remission for a year and a half now. Um, Good for you. Almost two, so I'm excited. But what made me tell was I was at my mom's house one day and I just I um and I come in the house and she looked at me the second I got in and she was like, you're high. And you know, no drug addict wants to hear you're high. And when she said that, I immediately got defensive and was like, I'm not high. I don't know what you're talking about. Why would you even think something about that? Like me, you know? And I was sitting outside with my mom and she was telling me, you know, there's no reason for you to do drugs. You know, why would you do like that to yourself, you know, and just talking to me. And I just started crying and I said, you know what, if you wouldn't have left, maybe I wouldn't have had, a, had to have had a reason to do drugs. And she just looked at me and my aunt was sitting there and we were outside. They were sitting down and I had walked back in and I was bawling my eyes out at this point. Um, and my mom told me, she said, Chloe, turn around and talk to me right now. And I turned around and I talked to her and she had said, you know, what's going on? Talk to me. Like, I'm here for you. And I don't care what it is. And me and my mom didn't have a really good relationship. But something in me told me that my mom really wanted to hear truly what was wrong that night. And I had had a really bad week um, as far as triggers had went. And my mom, I told her, I said, uh, they weren't the only ones. And she said, what do you mean? And she knew. She said, are you talking about Bob? And I told her, yeah. I, it happened. And she asked me, did I want to press charges? And I told her no at first. But then two cops had talked to me the next morning and told me, you know, like, if he just married another woman, this could be happening to the, her kids. And that's when I remembered she had 14, 15 grandkids that were more than me. And I didn't want it to happen anymore to anyone. I didn't want anyone else felt in the pain that I felt and that I still feel. That's heavy. Well, thank you um, for doing so. We really appreciate it. Um, does it help 
you to share? It helps me to share. Like, I get emotional about it, but um, it helps me because I know that when I see, you know, different women in public, and I look at them and I'm like, you know, they're going through a rough time. Like, I'm that one who wants to walk up to you and be like, look, let me take them so you can take a shower, you know? Because I never have that. That's what I wanted. Um, my whole, you know, I feel so bad for drug addicts because you never know their past. You never know what they've been through. Um, what happened to me as a stronger person when it speaking up because I firmly believe in that, you know, no kid should ever be scared of that. Right. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, if, uh, if people have specific questions, you guys can put them in the chat. I can see the chat. Um, but to go back to um, the other, you know, it's pretty much proven that almost anybody that has suffered some type of sexual abuse or assault, especially as a child, um, like, you know, I'm, I, these numbers aren't specific, but it's pretty close to eight or nine times out of 10, they're gonna struggle with um, drug addiction or um, suicide and severe depression as a teenager as a, and um, as an adult and throughout their entire life. Um, what I've noticed is with a lot of the people in your family, that was the case, just um, like your, I believe your aunt and your cousin that we talked to before the same thing happened with them. And it seems like you said that you started with, you started with um, using drugs when you were 12 and 13. And I wanna say that they were about the same age. And if I remember correctly, he kind of stopped I feel like when you guys started using drugs, maybe to escape the pain that, I don't want to say you were less appealing to him, but I think yeah. that maybe he had less control or something. Well, like once I you weren't like, you know, good girl or grandpa's girl or, you know, daddy's girl or whatever it may have been that something was different. I think the reason that I really like started you was it was right when Bob and my grandma had broke up, um, like right before. And I just always wanted to know, you know, why? Why could you come in and destroy someone's entire family? Not just me, but for generations. generations. I wasn't the only one abused. The women weren't the only one who were abused, you know. Why would you come in and hurt someone's like that and just leave for a whole nother family but i know now it's because there were more kids there and we were becoming too old and that's do what you, i do you think looking back on it when he got with your grandma i don't know um where their relationship originated or if he met her somewhere at church where he knew that there was, you know, a bunch of kids and two or three times as many grandkids. Um, but do you think like looking back on it, that that could have been something to where like he kind of saw, like, I hate to put it this way, but kind of like a gold mine, you know, or, you know, jackpot kind of thing. Most definitely any predator will take advantage of anyone they can. And my grandmother was a single mom of three kids, two at the time. No, three. Yeah. So I firmly believe he seen my grandma had kids and I don't want to say he did it on purpose, but he was hurt too. Um, but he just, I, I don't understand how you can hurt and just, else's life if you know that pain you know um did he ever try to take the stance i never got the details um was he ever not that it even matters but i'm just curious was he ever a victim himself did he ever try to play um that card 
I don't know uh, if he tried playing that card. Do you know? I heard because he was a smart, manipulative man. I can only imagine what he said during the trial to you know excuse his behavior over the last thirty years. Yeah, no, he just always said, I'm a changed man. Like, when we went to trial, he always said, I'm a changed man. <laughs> okay. And my DA, my DA had told me um, when I went and, like, did my, uh, they did their investigation on me and Bob and what happened. And the DA told me, we've got Bob. I'm going to put a warrant out for his arrest right now. Because when he had interviewed him, Bob had told him, I'm a changed man. I didn't do that. And he said, you know, no guilty person is going to say I'm a changed man if you didn't do that. Right. Wow. So while we're talking about, you know, the DA and um, the system, like, how do you feel? How do you feel about the way the system um, treats victims? And, um, you know what I mean? You trying to to get any kind of justice for you and your family? Something definitely needs to be done more. Um, Bob took years of people's lives and there were multiple people there to testify, seven, but I was the only one young enough to press charges. Um, and I don't think that they gave him enough. I mean, we're talking about he got seven, seven years abuse and he got seven years in prison i mean if he would have and... been younger you know who's to say he didn't just get right out at seven years and go do it again exactly and you said okay so you mentioned that you are the only one that was young enough to do anything now yes. what state did this happen again remind me oklahoma that he was prosecuted in so now, isn't there, there was some type of law to where if you don't report it for how many years, you can't do anything? Yeah. Um, I don't know too much about it. I know my aunt is definitely doing everything she can to get that changed, but COVID kind of messed it up for her. Um, but my yeah. aunt. Um, what's her, I'm sorry, not, can you plug that? What, um, I don't recall. I guess if anybody's interested in that, we can get them the details. I know that we had her details at one time and she was doing a petition to, I don't, I sound so ignorant right now because I don't recall the name, but she's was trying to get a law changed because victims only had, I believe it was like four to seven years to report anything. And she was trying to get it stretched to a good, a good um, chunk of time instead of such a short amount of time. Yeah. And as I just don't know the details on it. Um, because of everything that happened, I'll be the one to talk about it. Um, because of what Bob did, a lot of us women don't really communicate a lot. Um, we try to be there for each other, but it's really triggering. And so I don't talk to a lot of, or I talk not a lot. So that's why I don't know much about it. Okay. And that's horrible because that's your own family, you know? And I, I know they love it. No, I love them. Not saying that against you, I mean against him, what he did to all of you. And now you can't speak to each other because, or often, because it's a trigger. And all of you have PTSD and all that. And that, that's just really sad to me. Yeah, it can be stressful. Um, Bob definitely did a lot of damage. Um, a lot. And he would always, like, try and hide what he Like, when I was, you know, living with them like he would always try and hide it like if i would go outside and play or something like he'd just be like oh i'm gonna go check on the grandkids or oh i'm i'm just gonna go see how they're doing or whatever i don't know 
what he thought. But anytime anybody wasn't there, we were a target. If there wasn't somebody there, we were a target. Um, I remember sitting on my swing one time and Bob coming out, acting like he was going to push me on the swing. And then he went to pick me up to put me on the swing. And when he did, he picked me up and basically started humping me. Um, he put my vagina on him and started humping me. And putting his hands in the and yeah. Um. So and so you mentioned just a little bit that um, your dad was also a victim of his abuse. Could you um? um could you tell me more about him and if there was any like other strong men in the family? Um, that suffered from it and, you know, what the consequences were. My the only boy. Always. He was always the only boy around anyone. And, you know, like, even now to this day, I joke about it. Like, he's the only guy. Um, but Bob was scared of my dad. He won't say he, he would never say he was, but he was, um, my dad was abused by Bob when he was younger to the point, like, my dad had really long brown hair because he's Indian. And he would keep it up, like, in a ponytail or, like, a man bun, kind of. And Bob used to, like, pick him up by his hair, punch him through wall, like, beat him. Um... And I asked my dad, you know, why? Why did he hate you so much? And he said, because he knew I knew what he did to my sister. And he wasn't going to get away with it. And he said, nobody believed him. So Bob abused your father. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. Bob abused your father from what ages, do you think, roughly? I don't know for sure, but I'm sure it was his told me, like, the whole time growing up, like, Bob would beat him from the my dad. Um, and Bob, I think... I think, now I'm not speaking for anyone, I'm just speaking for myself. I think the reason that Bob might have beat my dad was because he didn't want my dad to say anything. It was kind of like, oh, here, like, I'm going to beat, let you know, say something, I'm going to do it again. You know? And I think it was oh, more. For sure. For sure. Did your dad ever say anything? To you or warn you? My dad. That he was abused? No, my dad didn't tell me he was abused until he was older. Um, like, I asked my dad specifically for this interview um, because I knew something had happened to my dad, but he never spoke about it. My dad doesn't talk. Um, but I asked my dad, you know, what happened specifically for this interview? Right. I think people know, you know, it's not just one, you know, it doesn't always just have to be one victim. And you don't have to always be sexually abused. You can be mentally abused, verbally abused, or physically. Um, so you said that you lived with... Um, Bob and your grandma for a long, a, a good amount of time. Um, how many, how many years, like, did this abuse happen in the same house? Um, I moved in and we only lived in two different houses, but the first house we lived, we lived there for probably a year, maybe two after I was born. 
or not after, after I had moved in, I moved to another house, which is where majority of it took place. And that was probably like eight or nine years we lived there. Um, have you ever gone back to either of these houses? Yes. Um, since? Yes. Um, right after trial, me and my cousin Jackie, uh, we were just sitting in the car talking about, you know, the old house. And that's what we refer to it as, as the old house. Um, and she had said something about, you know, it would be really cool to go see, you know, the old house. And I was like, yeah, like, let's do it. What, you know, I was driving and I was like, what are we waiting on? Like, we're not going home. We're going to the old house. We're not going to tell anyone. <laughs> and we went over there and I just remember like walking up the driveway because you can't drive into it anymore. I remember like walking up the driveway and just like, felt like my heart was about to thud through my chest. Um, but we walked up on that house and she was like, well, this is what I wanted to see, you know, we can go now. Cause she didn't want, she didn't want me to feel uncomfortable. And I went in, I opened the window and I went in. Um, I just remember like, I wanted to do it because I wanted to feel brave. Like you're, you're not here to hurt me anymore and I can go into my house and feel safe kind of thing. Um, but I wanted to do it where he had hurt me the most. And that's what I did. Did it make you feel better? Like, did you, was there a sense of relief going in there and kind of facing that fear? Oh, most definitely. I felt like because I had went into the house that nothing could stop me. Like, I'm brave enough to do that. I'm brave enough to do anything. Um, and that's... Was it this was, moments after you found out he was convicted? Like, is this... Like, did he get sent to jail and then you went and did this? The same night. The wow. same night. That's wow. That's that's crazy. Yeah. That yeah. I can't I couldn't imagine how that felt. Dang, I would have had champagne and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um. But that's that's crazy. It was. Uh, it felt good to be able to say that I might have helped someone. Like I. I wanted him to not be able to hurt anyone anymore. Um, does just, um, out of curiosity, does your um, father still keep in touch with any of you guys or is it kind of the same thing where it's just too triggering for everyone? I am, I love my dad. I, I talk to him. Um, I'm not really supposed to see him. Um, for the simple fact of I lost my daughter due to drug that um, my I wasn't allowed to have my daughter because they're drug addicts and I love them to death both of them but they're still drug addicts they're still and, facts yeah I mean I love Death. I'm a daddy's so. girl. I die. But that's mm -hmm. because God, he would never let anything, you know, happen to me. He would never let me hurt. Um, what would you, like, what would you tell you, like, your younger self? Like, if you could give your give yourself like a warning or um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, well, I guess 
honestly, like what I would tell my younger self is, you know, honestly, I should have spoke up sooner um, and not been scared. I should have just spoke up. But again, I didn't want anyone hurt. I'm a firm believer and God will take what is meant to be taken care of. And that doesn't involve people his problems for him. And I've always been that um, way. But so how, sorry. Go ahead. I would say how many, how many years do you think Bob was abusing people? Like if you could roughly guess, like was it 30 years, 40 years, 45 years? It was probably as far as 30, 30 or 40, yeah. Um, okay, so he was affecting people's lives as young as two and three years old, all the way to adults for 30 to 40 years. Yep. And he got off easy. I mean, he did, but he didn't. Um, Bob actually prison from like cancer. Um, but, you know, even when he died, like something in me felt guilty, like, because again, I'm one of those believers that God will take care of things. And, you know, anybody wants to spend their last moment with their family. But I wanted to childhood seeing my family and having a family, not somebody who comes in and destroys it and then tries to hide everything. Did he ever try to contact you while he was in prison and apologize? No. Um, the day I prosecuted him, he actually smirked in my face. Um, he did what? Smirked in my face. And just kind of laughed. He leaned back in his chair. It was a rolly chair, and he kind of rolled toward me, and he smirked when I was telling my testimony and pointing at him. That's horrible. <clears throat> Chloe, do you think that there's any connection between abuse and, like, most addicts? Most definitely. Um, any person who suffers from abuse just doesn't want to fit. You know, there's either your bad feelings or your once in a blue moon, good feelings, you know, and when you're on drugs, you don't feel anything. And that's why a lot of survivors turn to drugs because it's easy to hide. And, you know, some people don't have family who believe them and that's their only way to run because they don't have nowhere to run. Family is supposed to be family. At the end of the day, that's all you have. And, and even as a kid, even if you're not around drugs, if you, like you said, you were smart enough when you went to run away multiple times and you got to the end of the driveway and you looked back or maybe you got down the road and it started getting dark and you got scared and you went home, like kids are smart. And even if you're not around drugs, you already know from movies and TV or seeing it in family and friends, like, you know, that's obviously an escape. So even if you don't have access to it, you need to escape. And if you can't physically escape, a kid is going to find a way to escape. I mean, just look at what they do with baby gates and trying to lock kids out of Christmas trees. I mean, like a baby is like a cat. They will find their way on top of a Christmas tree. So imagine what a 12 or 13 year old is going to be able to figure out um, in order to escape like this hell that they're in. And, you know, like a lot of, I say survivors have a lot to, or drug addicts have a lot to do with survivors because my mother is a survivor um, as well. And she is. She was clean for 14 years. 14 years. And then she threw it all away. She didn't want to fill anymore. One little thing happened. She yeah. got it. And she didn't want to fill anymore. 
and she's lost everything. I just like I pray for it. That's not all. easy to bounce back from. Yeah. It's just not an easy journey. Um, so what do you how do you feel I guess this is just like a kind of a different subject but how do you feel about predator catching and exposing predators do you do you think that it's a preventative thing like what do you feel that that does how do you feel about the whole movement I think it's an awesome thing um, for the simple fact of there's many people out here who their family don't believe them or they don't want to believe them um, because maybe they're being abused in a different kind of way. I mean, who knows what somebody's backslash is, but I def definitely believe that predators catching is a amazing thing because I wish somebody would have done that for me when I was young and I was too scared to speak up. This is kind of a, a silly question, but like, it just made me think of, like you said, like people don't believe them. So say Bob Brewer was alive right now and he had access to a smartphone and all y'all are 12, 13 and older now. So he doesn't want anything to do with you anymore because he's disgusting. Yeah. Um, and he's on an app and he talks to a decoy and he gets exposed. And I know that you guys all at one point said something, everybody was leery of him, but they were like, no, he's Bob. He's Mr. Pastor, comedian, you know, um, mentor type of guy. There's no way, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a man of God. He wouldn't do anything like that. Nobody believed any of you until after it happened for 30 to 40 years. Do you think if he would have gotten exposed and like by somebody, you know, not relevant to the family, if he would have gotten exposed for being a predator sooner, do you think the whole family would have spoken out? Do you think it could have prevented your abuse entirely? I don't, well, if maybe if it would have happened, like when it happened to my aunts, my cousins, then it could have prevented from prevented me from being a, abused entirely but at the same time like you can't just catch someone if like Bob he always kept it in the family like he always yeah kept it in the family um and that's what's so disgusting mm -hmm. to me like that's your own family um but I feel like it would it would have prevented it it could have. Because it just makes me think because like he did this well into his 60s. So it's like sometimes I feel like when men are caught in their, their 30s and 40s or 20s, you know, whatever age, if, you know, if, they're, if they really have a problem and, you know what I mean, and we find their social medias and it shows that people are already calling them a pedophile on the internet. There's obviously something going on there and they get exposed by whomever it may be um, and possibly get some type of charges. Um, I just wonder if you think if it would make a difference, you know, versus somebody going just, you know, being able to do it for 30 and 40 years versus maybe getting caught earlier or at least like brought to light. Like if you, if your cousin was abusing you and, you know, all of a sudden everybody in the family is getting sent a video of them trying to mess with the child, you know what I mean? Do you think it, like, it would be taken more seriously? I think it would just be harder to push under the rug, like how people used to do it back in the day? Well, and still I do. like that would, um, well, let's say, like, if you would have went and, help everybody in the future. 
and it, it possibly could have helped. Like, I don't really know what to say about that other than that would have been something great to happen when I was younger. I would have been so relieved had a superhero stepped in and taken care of all my problems for me. And that's how I view you guys. Uh, but you were kind of like a superhero at 13 to get him locked up. So, but, you know, it takes that one person. Um, and sometimes, you know, for me, even that night, I, I was so scared. I did not want to tell. But I wanted some relief. I wanted to quit feeling what I was feeling. I wanted to quit having these dreams and not being able to talk about it. I wanted to quit seeing things and not being able to talk about it. Um, I can't see the chat right now, but does anybody have any questions? I'm gonna have AZ send me some questions. He's still in here. Is there anything that, um, Chloe, that you haven't spoke on yet that um, you'd like to talk about? Um, you can talk about the house, Chloe, how you went back there. Okay. Um, well, when I went back, uh, I would say, like, when I went back to the house, so relieving just to be able to be there and see something positive about the house to see you know you know growing up everybody always says oh back i see people say like oh back in the day when i was a kid you know and they have these great stories and me it was almost like growing up I involved myself in those conversations and so when i went back to the house it gave me an opportunity to see the positive and the negative. And that's something I struggled with so bad growing up because there was always something negative going on. And it was always worse than everything positive. Um, going to the house, I went in and I looked in Bob's room where he slept. The bed was still there, the dresser was still there. Everything was still there, his clothes his pictures, his songs that he had written. Um, and it was heartbreaking. There, I found a picture of Bob and um, my cousin talks about it, the song he had wrote about cousin um, with the pretty blue eyes, or pretty green eyes and long black hair. And I had found that a picture frame and when I found it in the picture frame, I busted it because I just didn't want it anymore. I, there was no use for it. It felt good to be able to, like, I don't know. It just felt good to be able to sit there and say, like, I'm strong enough to do this. Like, and that's just all it was to me. I felt good about being strong and helping others. I, it wasn't going to happen to anyone else. You are strong. Like, seriously, thank you. I just want to let you know that you're doing great. And like, we, we appreciate you sharing and you, you're beyond strong. Like, I, I can't even find the words. Like, I feel corny. Um, but yeah, hella well, strong. You're definitely doing great, and you're very young. It's very brave of you to come up here and show your face and tell your story. Um, everybody in the chat is very supportive. Um, I just want my daughter to be back on this video, and I want her to know that, you know, my my mom ain't gonna play. Like, I don't want her to be scared because I don't care if my kid comes to me and tells me something like that, that's the end of that. Like, I'll put an end to it and I'll make sure something's done about it. Definitely. 
but I just don't want her to be scared. And I want her to be able to look back on this video and be like, my mom was, you know, why, well, I can talk to her if I need to, you know? Everybody thinks that you're a hero. Thank you. They thank you. They appreciate you. We definitely appreciate you for sure. I you're doing a very great job. You are definitely doing a great job. Yeah, are you in you. therapy? I'm not. I just got out of therapy months ago because um, I got my daughter back from DHS. I got a job, started doing good, you know. I'm still struggling, but I'm getting there. And all that matters to me is my daughter's by my side. That was one thing, like when they, when DHS came and took her, I was scared of like, you know, there's so many places in this world, there's so many miles to cover and I wouldn't have known where to begin. And that's what made me change from being a drug, a drug addict being an active because if I'm not an active parent, my kid may be too scared to tell someone someday. So. Does anybody else have any questions for her? Uh, I apologize, I can't see the chat. Yeah, no, I can see the chat, but, but um, it's just everybody showing love. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. No questions yet. <laughs> I can Angie only... asked the question about the therapy. Yeah. yeah, I had, as a child, I received a lot of therapy, different therapy. Um, constantly, my whole life, I'm on medication just to be able to sleep at night and to be able to wake up and make it through the day. Um, without seeing things or hearing things or just having a panic attack because I feel like I can't make it anymore. Do you think that therapy would help you? Have you gone to therapy at all? I have. Therapy can help you. And it can get things out. But my therapy comes from helping people. Because what type of therapy am I receiving when I'm sitting there talking about all of my... Right. ...thing to change what happened to me. I can't change what happened. So why not change what happened or what's going to happen to me? That makes sense. Um, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, chocolate chip. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Um, I like this unicorn one. Oh, yeah. It has glitter in it. I can't remember what the flavor is, but it's good. <laughs> Probably like cotton candy or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I can't see the chat. <laughs> yeah, no, everyone is literally just saying, that's awesome, stay strong, brave girl, bless you for sharing your story, Chloe. Chloe, thank you for the eye-opener, you will help a lot of people, thank you for coming forward. Um, here's a question, does talking, getting stressors off, mm, uh, does talking, getting stressors out off her mind help? I don't know if you can decode that. Um, I'm assuming maybe just talking about it. Talking about uh, me. It, it, I, like I, anytime I talk about and you can ask any of my friends or anyone, like if I talk about my story, it's not because I want people to know what happened to me. I want people to know that it's okay to stand up. Like no to the day, like, I don't ever talk about what happened to me for my satisfaction. Of course, it's going to trigger me. But I want to do it to help other people.
I want to be that girl, someone who text and be like, hey, I need you. I need a friend. Um, is there a way that you, <clears throat> if anybody does want to contact you after this, is there a way that um, they can reach out to you, like email or um, a certain way? Facebook. Um, and just look up my name. Okay, yeah. So I guess um, you guys can search that up if you need to reach out to her or let me know and I'll get you guys in contact. Um, and I believe, did you have a cash app set up that is gonna go to sexual assault victims or something along those lines? Yes, I did. Um, <clears throat> I, what my goal is, is I wanna start a fundraiser um, for sexual assault victims, but with starting the fundraiser, I was hoping to get donations to buy these shirts that I had made, and they're super cool. Um, on the back of it, it says, uh, we will speak for those who are at mute. Um, it's a Bible verse, and then it has a survivor picture on the front, and that's actually me. Um, but I okay, hope Okay, awesome. I want this shirt... To speak, it, it, I'll send you a picture of it. Like, it speaks for itself. I don't give too much details on it. But, like, it literally tells you, like, we need to speak up for those who can't. Because if we don't, then who will? Um, and I, I want to okay, take off. Okay, so I'll. Drivers. I want to get that picture from you after this. And I'll post it on Instagram. And I believe. I don't know if you have a PayPal or just the Cash App, but I know the Cash App is um, We Will Be Heard, right? Yes. Okay. And, yeah, so we're going to try to get this going and um, get these shirts started so we can get that out. But, yeah, after this, um, if you guys just give me a little bit of time, I'll get it posted on Instagram for you and link her. Um, but my Instagram is no games underscore mob M O B, and AZ's is no games for weirdos, and um, I'll post Chloe's on there so you guys can find it because I don't know what it is offhand. Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't even think I know my Instagram off offhand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tag you. I'll do a couple posts so nobody can miss it if they watch my stories. Okay. If they don't, they're fake friends. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know if there's, I can't see the chat again, so I'm not sure what's happening on that end. Yeah, I can see the chat. Um, there sure. is another question. Um, All right, well, somebody, back to the donation thing, how else can we donate besides Cash App? Um, Angie, we can figure that out because, you know, if someone doesn't have Cash App, they can always, I don't know, and then we can Cash App you because you just have Cash App, right, Chloe? Yeah, that's yeah. Um, But there was another question. I got to scroll back up one second. So because your abuser was seen as a community leader and a man of God, has it altered your stance on religion in any way? Nope. Easy uh, enough. The open mind of anybody, and it doesn't matter. If some kid comes to you and tells you this person did this, it don't matter if it's a preacher. It doesn't matter if it's your daycare leader, your school leader. They're not lying to you. A kid's not going to come forward and say something like that. That's not true. Um, and as far as religion go with it, I am a firm believer of God. Um, if it weren't for God, I would get it through. And, you know, honestly, I am one of the people who feels for, my, um, feels for the 
Bob, you know, I don't know how to say that, but I firmly believe, you know, maybe he tried hiding it in religion so much because he had some type of view on religion because of what happened to him. You know, I just, I don't believe religion has anything to do with it. It's the person and the person hides it, never know. So he just chose to hide it that way. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? There's not many questions in here. I was going to say about like being somebody who hurts kids like that, you know, it isn't always. I don't think it's always meant like to hurt the kid, but I believe, you know, people hurt, hurt people. So that's exactly what I was just thinking. Yes, hurt people, I agree. Hurt people without even realizing it. Yeah. And you know, you can't say you didn't realize something like that, but at the same time, hurt people, hurt people. Was there anything that we missed, Chloe? Not that think? Or anything else that you wanted to share? No, I just want to you know, reach out. At the end of the day, you never know what that person could do to someone else. Sometimes you've got to be a bigger person and not yourself, but think about, you know, yeah, this is scary for me to do, but it's just going to be just as scary for the next person. Right. Well, you did a very, you did a great job. Yeah. You really did. Thank you so much. And AZ couldn't get AZ's drive in. Um, you know, hopefully they might have a catch tonight. It's not too late. Um, but he couldn't get a good enough connection. I know that he's obviously going to reach out to you and thank you. And I believe he's listening as long as it's not cutting in and out. Um, but yeah, we really, really want to thank you. And um, we really want to try to get the shirt thing going. So we're going to get together and get the details. Maybe we can get a PayPal going as well on top of the Cash App um, and raise some money and get these shirts going ASAP. Um, I think that'd be dope. And that'd be cool Christmas gifts and stuff for people as well. Um, yeah. Nobody really needs anything that they get for Christmas. So Yeah, um, I for like, when I was making the shirt, you know, I was thinking to myself, I'm going to make this shirt and I'm going to turn it into something big. Like I'm going to make a shirt that everyone can wear, you know, and just to show people, you know, something little like a Bible verse will really speak to a person. Mm -hmm. Like even if they don't recognize it as that. Um, yeah. Nobody it doesn't does. sound like one to me. I wouldn't have guessed. Um, but I mean, I don't have a large platform, but I'm going to do everything I can to get started on mine. And I know AZ is definitely doing the same. Um, it was his idea. So, um, we're going to try to get that popping for you. Um, I think that would be dope. I want yeah. one. So, <laughs> but yeah, I want to see what it looks like. Um, I'm excited. So, yeah, we'll get that info um, set up ready for you guys. All right. Thank but, you. Yeah, I want to thank you very, very much. Um, I know yes, everybody will you. love. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, and everyone in the chat, thanks you. They said you're helping the next person by doing this. You're very brave for coming on here. Well, thank you for being 19. You're only 19, right? Man, I hope that, you know, by the time I get to be in my 40s and 50s, I hope to see more women standing up and really speaking out. You know, people just driving down the road, you know, people look at drug addicts, prostitutes, you know, drug dealers, anybody who's having a hard time and be so quick to judge them. But I'm that person 
walk up to you and be like, look, you don't need to be doing this. You know, what's wrong? Why, what are you struggling with? How can I help you? And it's about speaking up and being there for each other. I agree. You gotta be kind to one another. I can't remember who says that. Um, but yes, thank you. Thank I don't you. know how to, I don't know how to end this, guys. I can't do this. Well, <laughs> I'm so thankful to have been able to share my story. I was super nervous, not gonna lie, but I want to make a difference in this world. Well, we couldn't tell you were nervous. You did a great job. Yeah, you did awesome. Thank you. I feel nervous. Um, oh, yeah. But when I said everybody can reach out to Chloe, she is 19, y'all. Don't be sliding in her DMs in that type of way. She is cute. So, um, you know, if you need to talk about, you know, share your story and, and that kind of thing or show some love. But, you know, just yeah. want to throw that out there, y'all. <laughs> Getting things off your chest, I know it's hard, you know, and it sometimes just takes that one random person because I've had that one random person step out and be like, hey, I don't know you, but let me help you. And I didn't have that till I was older, but I think everybody deserves that person. Definitely. So here I am. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you for putting yourself out there as well to help other people. Well, thank you. Thank you. Oh. All right. So are we good? Do you have anything else to say? That's oh, it. No. I don't, I don't see any more questions in here. All righty. Um, everybody says thank you. You're brave. You did a great job. Um, I just can't stress that enough everybody in the chat, um, us as well. And yeah, we'll talk to you soon. I know you have to get going, right, Chloe? Anyway. All right. <laughs> All right. All righty. Okay. Until Bye, next guys. time. Thank you. Bye. Thank yeah, you. And keep a look out for the t-shirts. Yes. T-shirt gang. Okay. <laughs> okay, bye, guys. Bye.